All right, so now we're here with the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi, two uh, prominent dominant and probably very recognizable muscles of the uh, superficial back beating on, on the surface, which is what we're you know, mainly, mainly studying here, um, that you're mostly, probably almost everybody's familiar with. Um, if you're not, you'll be probably quickly, um, you'll quickly understand that, oh yeah, I see those all the time. Okay, so let's get started on those. So I've got three diagrams here. I'll get out of the camera so you can you can freeze uh, freeze frame this or take a screenshot and then uh, copy these uh, these sketches. So we've got three different ones: a, a front back view, then a kind of side back view with hands uh, or arms raised to get those lats kind of up and broader, and then one where the figure's uh, foreshortened. We're looking slightly down on it, so you can see um, some of the attachments here of the. Um, of the of both of those uh, uh, muscles, and I want to make sure I get those uh, uh, right for you too as well. So you know, later on when you learn anatomy further, you're going to forget some of the attachments and the origins, and and it's a, it's important for a doctor. Yeah, don't get me wrong, but uh, you can go back and practice that. Uh, but you'll find that if you miss it a little bit, uh, and, and if you just miss your memory a little bit, you're going to be fine as an, as an artist. You want to get those you know, larger, bigger forms and those subforms, and you're going to be more, more or less fine. So that's, that's been my experience. So you might have a different view. Those of you that are more advanced, that's fine too. Okay, so let's get started with the trapezius. The trapezius muscle is this muscle that sits on the back up here high. Now underneath it is the splenius. Okay, and the also the uh, sacrospinalis erector spinae, they come all the way up and grow up through here. And also the transversus spinalis is underneath here. Also the rhomboids later on, we'll talk about those, the major and the minor rhomboids that'll sit kind of a parallel uh, rhomboid-like shapes underneath here. They're underneath here too as well. And then the trapezius will also overlap the uh, latissimus dorsi a little bit. So it's a pretty dominal, dominant surface muscle up and through here. So let's take a look and see how this runs. So we're going to come up here and feel this, this back of the head image through here. So the trapezius starts out here, starts out here, bulges a little bit. Now this is going to go back, okay? And this is going to gonna, uh, turn here a little bit, bulge up a little bit further over here, further over here. And all this separation attaches through here and splits a little bit by ponderosis, right? Those attachments there splitting a little bit. So we'll get this turn like so, turn like so, okay? And we're going to get a little bit of that C7 uh, showing through up here, right up in here. So that'll come through a little bit, dominant bone muscle. Looks kind of like this in medical books. Right in through here. Try to commit this to memory and draw these. So you just draw these diagrams. You can do these things out of your head. I don't have any reference material in, in front of me. And that just takes time. It's a good exercise. And we'll talk about those things later later on. How to exercise and uh, kind of craft these these drawings a little bit. So skull basin through here. So attach it to the occipital region. It comes down and it overturns here. What's important to know is we're getting this overturning here, and I'll show you down here later on where it attaches to the, the lateral the kind of third of the scapula. So this is turning in across and arching the back. So that's why we have had multiple views to show you. Now this is attaching here on the acromion process, the top part of that area of the scapula in through here. So this is all sheathed over. And of course we're going to get some deltoid later on too. We're going to get some shoulder muscle, three heads of that of that shoulder muscle coming up through later on in over here on the back side of the here. I'm going to just kind of outline it for you here what we're going to see a little bit here. This is going to come down and over and it's going to end up through about right in through here. So we're going to get a little bit of that later because there's a triangle this is going to make later on of an opening for some other muscles. So trapezius here are the traps moving in this direction. Now remember we're going to get also underneath here a little bit the feeling of the sacrospinalis coming up. Remember the 
I like sketching or uh, I love standing muscles, muscles. Hopefully you love sketching. <clears throat> the iliocostalis, the longissimus, and also the spinalis, now they're coming up. They'll be bulging out a little later on, right in through here at their widest, attaching to those ribs and remember coming down. So I'm just going to kind of indicate just a little bit, attaching to the iliac crest in through here about a third of them. Of course, we have the obliques already. I've already got some of those in already. So just, just don't forget those. I want to make sure that that's important. It's, it's on your radar. Now, the trapeze as it comes across, it tends to overlap the scapula right here. And you'll see it on the ecrige. We've seen that. Or if you haven't seen that part yet, you'll see it. It tends to overlap through here, okay? Attached to the aponeurosis, okay, here, here. That's important. <clears throat> and then comes down like an arrow. Coming on down, coming on down, coming on down. About, oh, I'm guesstimating probably at uh, seven or eight on the uh, vertebral thoracic column there. So it's coming on down, coming on down. These kind of have this arrow shape in through here. Ponderosa is attaching about like right there. This is attaching to the ponderosis here and through here this, of the spinal area. So these can be very dominant and very big and then you get well-developed sacrospinalis muscles underneath it and you've got these very bulbous back forms. Uh, bodybuilders, you see that a lot. And kind of, it's kind of like when you draw that, it's kind of like all hell breaking loose in that it's just like there's so much when, a, when, a, when you see a bodybuilder, both male and female, how, how these muscles get over, I wouldn't say overdeveloped, well I'd say well developed, because they can get into these shapes, and the shapes get distorted because they're so, they're so dominant, they're so um, puffed up and built up. And that's part of the, the allure, I think, obviously, of that, of that practice. So, all right, sheathing over the scapula. Remember that, right in through here, sheathing over this little part of the acromion process, the spinal bit. That's important to get in your, your understanding, your practice right in through there. So this is, this is coming over so we can darken, contour line darken that in. A little bit through there. So you, you pretty much got the shape now. Once you get once you get into that, so you've got pretty much got it. Let's um, now take a look at this bottom view over here. This is a pretty funky, interesting view. Let's just try to recreate that one. This is a little bit more challenging. Let me get some clarity. So I'll try to make these clear for you best I can. Now this is the neck. It's not the opening. It's kind of like the neck being kind of like these actually, where they're come up and they're shaved off a little bit, so we'll see that. We might, what I might do to indicate that is to make this kind of a little tighter cylinder inside of it actually to show that even further where the neck would come up. So we're taking off the head in this view and we'll just give us a little shading. How about that? Do there. That might help a little bit, hopefully. Okay, so we have that. All right, so now what we can do is put on this trapezius muscle. So we know it's attaching here at the back. We're at C7 here. So we come up a little bit here, right? We're coming down. We're coming down. So you want to remember that arrowhead shape a little bit. And this comes over, over here, okay? Comes over now. It's going to attach now on the back third of the clavicle. So we're coming over here, okay? So that's that's a pretty nice shot. So we're attaching on the back third now of the clavicle. Slow it down a little bit so you can see it coming over. Okay, right through here. Attaching on to that form. Attaching on around. Fits nicely right in through here. Now on top of the of the acromion process in here. Okay, so I'm gonna to start to just shave Shade this in. You won't see this view as much because you probably won't draw figures with this extreme foreshortening, but it really helps to figure out, hey, what's going on in there? So we kind of shade this down a little bit. I'm not a big finger blender, but I, it's good for these 
for these drawings to do that sometimes. Let's smooth it out here. And so we're attaching here all the way through the clavicle over to the chromium process and around. Okay, so we'll get this contoured and then I'll smooth it and contour it again. You know, practice these diagrams. Make your own diagrams up. When I was learning anatomy proper, uh, when I was a student, uh, that's what we would do. We would learn from Bern Hogarth, who was one of my instructors, and I forget her name, Laura, I forget her name. It wasn't Laura Lasworth, but somebody else. Anyway, um, we, we practiced and drew their diagrams, and then we'd go home and draw and draw and draw. And you kind of emulate their style a little bit. I don't really care so much about style as I, I care more about uh, understanding. And through here. So we have that coming down. The point being is to just draw diagrams and to practice that. So we're coming over. Remember we're sheathing over now a little bit of that scapula, right? Right in through here, a little bit of the scapula. It's attached to the chromium process, but a little bit further. Remember that? Because we're right here now over there. Okay? And now we're going to come down and get that arrowhead shape. So it's really going to bulge in through here, right? like so. This is going to feel real bulgy. Okay, right in through here, coming on down. And then it gets into that arrowhead shape in through there, right? C7 in through here. Then we've got the spinal area, so that's going to give us this feeling here, then around. Okay, a ponderosus connection through here. That's a divot underneath too as well. Right in through there, and then we can start to tone these down a little. In terms of that, so we'll start to say, okay, maybe the highlight's here, maybe the highlight's going to be here, and so I can tone these down a little bit. Put that on through here, then on through here. Okay, and then we could come across with a little contouring. Feel that form through, round it, and this is up now in the back region by the neck, like so. So they're attaching now, C7 to here, to the base of the occipital region up, and then here to the clavicle along here, and then a chromium process. Over through overlaps a little bit, remember when the scapula overlaps here, and then through. Once you understand the form shape, you could take this muscle off and put it anywhere, and just draw it anywhere. And if you draw it long enough, you can draw it from many different angles, and you put it back on. So you're individualizing, right? And then you're grouping it together. Okay. So well, there we have the trapezius. Let's put it on now over here and take take into effect what we're doing. So now we're coming up over here. We know that that bulges out and it attaches to the base of the occipital part, back part of the skull and through there. A little separation for the for C7. Right in through there. Okay, this will come over like so and through here. Separation there. So we're coming over, cording out and then down this way. Okay. You get that feeling, get that turn. That's why I love three-quarter, drawing in three-quarter for anatomy. It just, it just shows us more, but diagrammatically we do flat views. So somebody asked me, Sally asked me, uh, email from a student, uh, how do we practice? And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that really soon about how to, how to find these things, but diagrammatic uh, working on your diagrams is going to be good, and then working from living anatomy, working from the model. And I'm going to show you another technique using the Cintiq, the Wacom Cintiq. And if you don't have one, you can use um, tracing paper. So this comes over now. This comes over and bulges, right? So we want to get the feeling contouring line coming over. You can feel it back on your person how dominant these are. So if you're athletic and you've worked out quite a bit, you've had to work this muscle out with shrugs 
you know, both male and female. It's not just a male thing at all, okay? Both. Okay, running through here so we get some turning, and this is going to turn down like this for now, okay? So trapezius coming on in through here, right? Now let's get that overall shape coming over here, right? Sitting on top of the acromion process and then overlapping a little. Remember, right through here. See how that gets easier? Overlapping a little, just like we did here, here, right? And also here and here. <clears throat> and this is going to come down and then start to just curve as it attaches to the back. Right, and start to curve, and we're going to come down and end up about right in here. It's a pretty easy drawing. Right in through here is the center of the back, the spinous processes. Just get them generalized here. Right in through here, so we're in perspective. Right in through there, that'll attach right there. And then we have the, have the trapezius in all its glory. Oh, okay, okay, no sound effects, sorry. There we go. Turning this around. It can be pretty bulbous. And then of course you have the sacrospinalis muscles going underneath it, right from here up, right? And then through and over to here, right? And underneath all this from the transverse processes where the spinalis is, all that can be bulgy. But we've got the lats to put under there as well. So we've got a lot still to, to go on. So that's why that back gets really, really pretty bulky and bulgy of all those muscles. So the trapezius helped raise the scapula in the shoulder region. So that would make this maybe even, since this is coming up, I'm going to bulge this up even a little bit more. This might overlap right in through here a little bit. These muscles and get wrinkly because the splenius is under here. Splenius, sorry. I always get that wrong. Splenius. I'm not the greatest Latin pronouncer. Through there. There we go. Alright, so we have really the trapezius now set in. So let's go now for the latissimus dorsi and start to put on the lats. Latissimus dorsi, let's add that on. So those lats, those, those side flanking, beautiful muscles of the human structure, I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. I tend to make my, my drawings a little bit wide, but I tend to draw my anatomy with, with some of these parts already on. I forget I have, to, I have to strip off some of this in one area, but it's a little bit narrower spot. This is the 10th rib, 11 here, 11. And little dinky 12 down in through there. Um, so the, the lats, the lats also help with lateral movement, shoulder movement, uh, scapula movement as well, and movement stabilization of the humerus or the, uh, the arms in through here. And they attach in some uh, interesting places actually on the humerus. You're going to find that it's going to be an interesting uh, place to, to, uh, to locate. So let's talk about the lat and, and um, uh, talk about its, its shape. Uh, to me, it's kind of like a cape. It looks like this. So the entire muscle here, here, and it barrels around the rib cage. So we're looking at it from the back. It's kind of like a cape, something you would drape around your back. So if you were here, right, you take a shower, or maybe as a towel, and you're toweling off, or you wear, yeah, maybe it's like a towel in this case. And so you have your hands in through your arm and you're toweling off your back if you do that. Um, it kind of it kind of looks like that. So here's a little head in through here. And so the, the body might be in through here. But it, it looks like a kind of a caped drape sort of thing. Now this is too big for the, for the figure, but you get the idea. And so coming back over here to reality, um, let's put that cape on. So the, uh, the lats are right in through here they tend to clip the scapulae about right here now they're underneath the the uh, trapezius right in through here they go underneath and they come up here okay we'll get the shape here they come underneath now they're over 
the sacrospinalis muscles, right? We have them, here's our sacrospinalis here, sacrospinalis. Remember the strong uh, stalk-like growth ivy or cords coming up. And so they're underneath here. Okay, we'll make that a real strong connection. Make sure we have that. We'll make a little shadow maybe right in through here. Okay. So we have that. Now as they come up, then they attach underneath. They, they go to the front of the, the uh, tubercle, the humerus here, and attach. If we're looking through it, I'm going to put a little green area where they attach a little round, round spot. So you can really notice how interesting this attachment is right in through, right in through there. And we're on the back side here now. But we want to go now on to the front side. So we're coming through and attaches here and over. Hugs across the serratus interior. So it gives it more bulk. So I'm going to make it a little bit more bulky. Right? So we come across here. It comes all the way down. Okay? So we're kind of just giving it some of that rib kind of bulkiness. Right? Comes all the way down and through. And then starts to attach right around in through here on the iliac crest comes all the way down and attaches through on top of the uh, sacrospinalis uh, muscles in through here. So let's take a look at that shape again. It gets pretty wide in through here, out, coming over, attaching in the front of over here in outwards gives us more bulk, right, in through here. We come through. Gives us quite a bit of bulk in through here, especially if they're well developed, right? So we have tenth, roughly tenth rib through here, roughly tenth rib. It's it's a pretty pretty thin sheet, but with the serratus interior coming through, remember those finger muscles like so, and like so, we get some some pretty pretty amazing bulk, especially well to both male and female, quite frankly, to both of them actually. So have that. Okay, now the lats will, they're coming through now, attaching over here. Okay, attaching over here some. And there's going to be this little space left between the oblique and the lats and the, um, the uh, sacrospinalis spinalis muscles right in through. A little triangular little form. Sometimes you'll see show up on the back right in through here just a little bit and now they're coming all the way across here sheeting over to the sacral area now all of this here is again thoracolumbar ponderosus okay or or a fascia that's attached all of this is attached by tendinous kind of material so if we start to now form this back further you're going to see this sheath over even on a cadaver you're going to get some aponderosis white connective material in through here and really down in through here okay and this is just going to sheath and you can see the striations as it just wants to turn and so again it's kind of like a bath towel or maybe a cape it's kind of a little bit more appropriate i think a little bit and you'll see ribs pop through the lats you'll see the serratus interior sometimes you'll even see the obliques pop through a little bit as they come, they want to come down, right? Like so, you'll see that. And you'll have to figure out which, which one, and the more you, you've studied anatomy and their angle and what they're doing, you'll, you'll have a, a good solid feel for it. So turning around here, coming over, attaching to, remember, the other side, the front side of the, the tubercle, the humerus in through there. So these will sheath around, really wonderful muscle again underneath the trapezius, the pre trapezius, trapezius is more dominant, through here around. Okay, have that rib cage turning, give it a little bit of shadowing through there, make that, that's still the dominant for, forming through there, and there you go, you have that uh, trapezius now, uh, muscle, uh, working in through, in through there, so I've got a little time, time left going. Um, so let's go on now, and try to get a little bit more information into here. Let me show you something too on the back. This little area now with the deltoid. See how this deltoid 
will come over here. Now it will sheet over. Now I can show you this. This little area right in through here, let me make an issue of it because we're going to put the second part of this video, or I might make a separate one. I haven't decided yet. Won't know until I do it. This little triangular back window. See this little window in through here? There's three different muscles that are going to be in through. I'm not going to show them yet because I'm going to make an issue out of them uh, with the next video. But it makes a triangle, doesn't it? So these come up, sit, the deltoids sit of the, um, the, the uh, thoracic back area. Come in through here, sit over on top. Then they come through like so. Okay, attach over. And they make this interesting little show through triangle. See it here and here. And they're the wrong, you can see maybe just a little bit of the rhomboid, the teres major, and the infraspread spinatus muscle. We're going to talk about that um, after. I think they're not as important, but in well-developed, again, well-developed models, they can confuse you because they can get very rounded or bumpy, especially the teres major. And here, I'll show you where that attaches a little bit. It's a little bit different. It's pretty amazing in through there. All right, so <clears throat> let's go on to our, our uh, foreshortened uh, model, our lady. Let me make this a lady. Um, and let's take a look at that lat. So what's happening in through here as, as the lap uh, comes across, so we know that it's uh, uh, underneath the trapezius, right, clips the clavicle, excuse me, the scapula here. So we're right here with the lap, the lats, right, we're coming across, coming across here, and then we sheathe over all this material, give it a little bit of bulkiness right we're going to get some bulky lap going in through here I'm going to shade this down a little different direction look at those lats working they're going to come up here now we're going to get that interesting connection here this is going to come through now we want to leave a little bit of that triangular window, don't we? So we have the deltoid coming up, up in through here, okay, like so. And that's going to give us this window of about right in through here, that triangular area there. And it's going to give us a little bit of this and over that we would see through as we get that deltoid coming over here. Actually, actually about right through there. It's more challenging, that's for sure, to get that deltoid coming back, coming back over here. What I don't want to confuse you is, is to get this lat coming up in through here, right? We're coming up, we're coming up, we're sheathing up, we're coming over, because this, this part is going to come back to the back. This part is going to come back. That's pretty easy to attach right down and through here. But we want to come back and see it attach over now right and start to sheath over and attach underneath okay gets thinner underneath and then right in the front be about right in through over here now where we would attach that lat coming through and look how it gives you that bulky quality right in through right in through there so the other deltoid would the top would be right in through there i don't want to get too much in there clavicle through here. Okay, carotid process, the chromium process in through there. The um, sternum is here. Let me get that a little bit finished out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's sternum in through here. And I put the xiphoid a little bit poking out. You may or may not see that, but I just want to show it anyway. Just to give you some example. Okay, rib cage in through here, right? So here's our lat connection right in through there. So we get this window opening here a little bit. Okay, infraspinatus teres major would be here. Okay, so let me just show you that and through here. There we go. Put that window there. So it's a window onto a few more deeper muscles that are underneath all of that.
And again, the, the back is like the front, not necessarily symmetrical. That's going to be important to know to keep that in mind as you're drawing. Now let's come down the back and let's take the lap now over here. So we come down and through over and through here, sheathing over part of this pelvic area. Here's the bone of the uh, iliac crest, the pelvis, the sacrament through here. Maybe get the little cox coxygeal point there. This comes over and sheathes over all of this. This is bone, this is bone. Sheaths over all of this. Here you get the separation of the spine. We'll get that again. And these are going to barrel in this viewpoint. This is going to be real round and almost really round. And remember those course. Now underneath that right is also what? The sacrospinalis erector spinae muscles. Remember the I love sketching muscles, the iliocostalis longissimus, and also the spinalis. And underneath those are the transverse Transversus spinalis, which we don't have to really know that much, but it's going to give us that really rounded uh, feeling. So here's the end of the scapula through there. So curving that, getting this to move is important around the lat as best we can here. Really come on over, come on over and through there. Just might feel that a little bit. Coming through. Then we get this popped over. There we go. Like so. And then we'll come around here and get to finish out that lat. So look how they can be very bulky. Gives you that really bulky kind of look. So let's get a little clear with the last part of the traps into here as they came down and over. Like so. And this is a ponderosis, and of course this sheaths, this all is the lat that sheaths over on top of this with a ponderosis too. I'm going to leave a little bit, a little bit lighter so you can, you can see that and give a little bit more contrast to that. Now what's interesting too about you come up here is that this area right through here, the sternocleidomastoid muscle comes off the neck and attaches down here to the uh, sternum and the clavicle, like so, off and through here. So you have one on this side. On the mastoid process of the skull, we don't see those, but I just want to show you the shape, because this is interesting. When you get this right, you get this here, and this attaches here, and you get this hollow of the neck, or what artists call, when I was at Art Center, Harry Carmian taught me, this is the pit of the neck, and it's darker area. Now it's got some more muscles and tendons inside there. But for the, and of course this is the rib cage, but we see this more as a, as a divot or a hollow. So it's good to get, it's good to get that in there. There we go. All right. So lastly, let's go on and put on the last, our last lat uh, onto Oh, I didn't connect it over here, did I? Sorry. So we came around, connected that. There's something that's wrong. This is the deltoid. So coming up underneath, this would get this muscle gets thinner up here, right? A little cape, and then attaches up underneath, and probably in the front about right, right in through there. So it really curls up. It really helps move again, move, move the scapula, and shoulders quite a bit. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. So now let's go over here for the last one. So remember, we'll start under here, right? And we'll draw that cape coming up. Now it's going to cut into and over a little bit of the scapula. So we know we got that. We definitely want that. So that comes up underneath, blunts that a little bit. So we have that. We have this. This is going to really push up, watch, to there, okay? And hug over. 
It's going to hug that form and come up and attach underneath. And in the front, probably back right in, probably in the middle somewhere, but right in through there, come on over. And we're going to bulk this out a little bit more. We'll pretend like the serratus interior is on there to bulk it out. So you're going to get a little bit of this shape to it here. Where those fingers might show through. Tenth rib will come in a little bit further. Okay. <clears throat> and then remember, this is going to go down. And we're going to hit this. Now here's the... Here's the heliotic crest in through here, right? So you might see a little bit of that coming through. Just keep it simple, box-like. Right? And attach over to run down the back and about right through there. And of course the obliques are right there more on the side. So there's your there's your lat running through, ponderoses, attachment over. Okay. Coxygeal down. Feel that boxy form coming over and then it'll be about right in through here. Okay, and of course on top of the sacrospinalis. So this kind of boxes out in through here. We have the 10th rib. Actually, sorry, that's a 12th, 10th rib here. That can be a whole shadow thing going. Right in through there, it's just fine. So we have that. <clears throat> And we get this lat now coming over, squeezing through, getting getting tinier, and it's going to come down and through and over, attached back and through here, up underneath, right? So we have that coming through, and then of course we get thicker. And this is the part we see. Let's see, we have some rib, and then we certainly have the let's see the serratus anterior muscles are going to give us some good stuff going on, give us this little chunky sort of hill peaks and valleys. Okay, and that's going to come in through, and then we're at the 10th rib. This wants to come on down and over into there, and then we have our lats right on in, right on in through there. So, we've got a lot of good stuff going on. Now, if we put the deltoid on, remember from here, so it comes out a little bit, and this is going to come over, deltoid's going to come over, right in through roughly here and over here that's going to create this little this little window right right in through right in through here that we're going to have to deal with in a moment so it's right in through i'm going to leave this deltoid off it's getting long we have those other other muscles sitting through okay so i think we have what we need now to understand more of the trapezius and of course the uh, latissimus dorsi and, and uh, again I'll show you soon how to start practicing these it's it's in actually the head anatomy section uh, of these of course I'm doing these in order and we'll look back on these and people already see it and realize it but it's it back in the head head anatomy section was called living anatomy so you can start to use photo reference and start drawing anatomy, draw your diagrams, and then draw your photo reference. Later on we'll get really, really specific about this pelvis. I'm just keeping it a little bit more simple. All right, so there you go. There's the trapezius, the, the lats, latissimus dorsi, and uh, now we're ready to go on to the back triangles, these little open areas, and find the rhomboid the teres major and the infraspinatus and how they uh, in some views they will they will come out a little bit and uh, say hi to us and so we want to know what we're drawing especially in more muscular backs um, all this can get confusing because we haven't even lit them and lighting can diffuse and change the look of anatomy and you have to be kind of a detective uh, at times uh, with it and that can be a little bit more challenging too as well okay all right so i'll see you guys soon uh, for the next one in terms of the uh, triangle on the back all right take care bye bye